um, someone who is a words of affirmation person, it, it, it's interesting, like, uh, like for example, the difference between acts of service and words. Acts of service would be, I'm just going to carry the groceries in instead of saying, wow. I just wanted to pause this for a brief moment because if you notice, his definition of words of affirmation is someone who knows how to tell you that I love you. I've done that with my son and my daughter constantly. I'm proud of you. Oh my God. I've told my daughter how many times I'm proud. I love the way she dances. I love the way she looks. I love the way she smells. I love the way she's taking herself to eat healthy from uh, eating gluten crap that's not good for her body. The way she goes to the gym. I'm proud of you. I tell my son, I'm proud of you on a regular basis. I do. And I'm just doing a checklist here just as parents. We ourselves as parents have to make sure that we are giving our children words of affirmation, you know, words to help build them up. And I do that on a regular basis or better yet, I have done that. And I love the way he gives the description of what is words of affirmation. You tell them that you're proud of them. I, 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 you're, you're great looking. You build them up. You say these things to constantly be positive with them. At the same time, you have some people in this world, Tubies, whether they're your family members or not, they are freaking vampires. Sometimes, no matter how much words of affirmation you give them, it's like a cup who has the bottom part cut out of it and you keep filling it up with water, you keep filling it up with water and it just keep coming out. It keep pouring out. It keep pouring right out. It's exhausting. It's, um, oh, oh my God. It's like a vampire. You know how vampires come and they just, they're, they're not happy until they're just sucking all the blood out of you. They got to keep sucking the blood out of you. They leave enough blood in you so you can go out there and make some more blood so they can come back and suck some more of the freaking blood out of you. There are some people in this world who, no matter how much you praise them, no matter how much you tell them that you're proud of them, it's never going to be enough. It's never going to be enough. And in the process of that, it's exhausting. You see, in my relationship, when it came to my, my, my son and my daughter, whew, they're both Jehovah's Witnesses. And Jehovah's Witnesses, and I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But Jehovah's Witnesses are not about trying to keep families together. Jehovah's Witnesses come into your life and they will tear your family up from the top to the bottom. They're not trying to keep families together. The Bible says to treat your, your, your parents with honor, respect, and value. Jehovah's Witnesses will come into your life and say, just because they don't want to be a part of your Bible study group, you're supposed to treat your family, your, your, your parents like they're dead, garbage, uh, something like, you know, you scrape from underneath your shoe. No. Nah, nah. But I don't want to go contrary to the topic here. We're going to talk about words of affirmation and where you should apply that, you know? It is important for all of us to be have affirmation. And like I said, Sheila True Love, my words of affirmation come from my mother. Oh, let me put this in order. Excuse me. Jehovah God, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, my mother, because she's the reason why I'm breathing, she could have always had an abortion and I would be having this moment of happiness that I'm having now, uh, and myself. I need one, two, three, yeah, four people that I need affirmation from. Anything else? <laughs> like I said, if you're not putting money in my cash app account or my freaking PayPal or my bank account every week or on a regular basis, uh, and I'm supposed to, I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, no better yet, excuse you. But anyway, let's continue to listen in. Instead of saying, wow, look at you carry those courses and you're so great at that. It's like, okay, I need you to help me. But after, words of affirmation is more validating the work that I'm doing, validating me, um, just simply by your words. Um, and again, I'll give you an example for that. Um, and this is, this is really important. Um, and something that's really important is you can get so tied up in what people say about you. 
um, that it can control the way you live, control the way you think, control how you see things, control your perspectives, control your mindsets. It can control your behavior, the way you dress. Literally, people's words can cripple you. Whoever said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt, that is a lie. Words can hurt you. Words are so crippling. I mean, the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Those are our words, what we speak, what we say. This is crazy. Someone can literally say to you, yo, them shoes, they trash. And you could like, I don't care what you're talking about. You could go home and you just look like, mm, maybe, <laughs> maybe you are a little, like it's weird. Words literally can cripple your mind if you are a words of affirmation person, as in you show and receive love by words. Um, and and you, you're you gonna have a love tank. You're gonna say, okay, was I loved enough? I love the point that he brought out that words can actually cripple your mind if you are that type of person who, your, your love language is words of affirmation, really. Uh, and I gotta keep it real with you. Um, the reason why my love language will never, ever, ever be words of affirmation is because I've done interviews with pimps. I've done interviews with prostitutes. And I listened to the prostitutes talk. And what what was it that got you pulled out there into the prostitution arena, if you will? It was about the way the things that he said to me. It was always about the way the pimp talked to the woman. He gave her words of affirmation. He was telling her, I love you. I think you're great. And they, they, that's, how, that's pimp talk. So when your love language is basically uh, words of affirmation, to me, and I'm not trying to offend anyone, that's foolishness. You see, my love language is quality time. How much time do you spend with me? And the reason why that's my one of my, and, 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 and my, my other love language is acts of service. And the reason why my love language is quality time is because time is something you can't get back anytime someone is willing to invest their time in you and their energy oh come on now let's keep it real here uh, uh where, where are we are we on planet earth or in the twilight zone time is something you can't get back so when somebody's willing to invest their time that's max crazy cool to me And when it comes to acts of service, like I see you getting ready to move and you may need some help moving, I'm gonna help you out with that. Or I see that you're getting older, a little bit older in age, if you will, and you may need a little extra help than you usually probably need it. Let me just kind of like pitch in acts of service. That's 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 love to me. That's my love language. But you have a, a, other people who their love language is like pimp talk. If you want my view, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful because this is crazy. The only words of affirmation that you need is from Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, your parents, especially your mother. You should care about what your mother thinks because like I said, need I say it again? I'm not going to say it again because you already know what I said previously. And you know, and you and yourself, and yourself. Th those are the only people that you need to be concerned with because needing this outside validation and being a people pleaser. Why? Why? Based on what? I I'm sorry. Help me understand because I'm lost. And if somebody can help me to understand why should I be a people pleaser? And I need words of affirmation from imperfect people who every time you look up, they're screwing up, they're messing up, they're making mistakes. They're sitting up there, they're not applying Matthew's chapter seven. When you get a chance, my tubies and my Teletubbies, read Matthew's chapter seven, especially, I think it's like Matthew seven, one through three or one through whatever. <laughs> yeah, let me extract. Yeah, yeah, just check out Matthew chapter 7 when you get a chance. Uh-uh. No, I don't need no outsider's validation or no imperfect person who's just as imperfect as I am. I don't need you to tell me that, oh, I'm worth something because you said I'm worth something? Really? 
Because you're going to find a lot of women who are like that. They want to be married because if I don't have a man, that means that I'm not worth much because a man a man is the be all to end all. No, not, never with she the true love. Have, mm -mm. Oh, 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 mm -mm. Mm -mm. that's craziness. And the reason why that's craziness is because I know who I am. I, I mean, I have a lot of people who ask me, Sheila, why are you as confident as you are? How can you constantly be the bubbles and champagne? When you walk into this office, what, what's up? What's up with that? And my thing is, let me tell you where my confidence comes from. My confidence comes from, I may have one person who may reject me or who disapprove of me, but I'll have 10 more other people who are, how you say, supportive of me. So for the one person who may just not, I don't know what the hell is their issue. They, they need mental, I don't know. Uh, one person who is mentally challenged or how you say emotional disasters or walking train wrecks. I don't have time for that. Because for the one person who may reject me, I have 10 other people who are supporting me. That's the way I see it. I don't have time to focus on all the wrong, what? No, I don't. Where do I get that kind of mentality? I don't know. Maybe it's a gift. Maybe it's a blessing. I don't know. But I do know this, that God brings people into your life for two reasons and two reasons only. They're either going to be a blessing or they're going to be a lesson. And the people that I've been running across lately, my tubies and my Teletubbies, <laughs> they have not been a blessing. Trust and moi, they have definitely been lessons for me. They have. Because I've been praying to my Heavenly Father. You know, I have two amazing, great friends, but they're not with me. One of my best friends, they live in Florida. The other one is all the way in Jersey. I need local support. And then I'm asking my Heavenly Father, why is it that I can't seem to find any friends where I am? I'm here in Albany, New York. I'm, I'm in New York. What's up? What's up? At the same time, I wasn't taking the time to understand that sometimes, and but if, forget sometimes, <clears throat> all the times, there's times when God don't let you have friends because God wants, he wants to make you have you focus. God is wanting you to come to him. He wants you to come to him. And until you focus on the things that God wants you to focus on, He's never going to allow the right people to come into your life because if you have these friends that you've been praying to God so hard for, God, I've been praying for just three good friends. I've been praying forever. I just need some support. God is not going to give you those friends until you focus on what God wants you to focus on. And um, the thing is, um, if God were to permit you, let's just put it like that, to have these good friends or whatever the hell you want, they're going to be a distraction. They're going to distract you from what God wants you to be focused on. He wants you to focus more on your ministry. Like I know someone who he's like, I just been asking God for three good friends. Why don't God hear my prayers? God, God heard your prayers and God even answered you. He even answered you. But does he get it? Of course he doesn't get it because he's so busy just wanting what he wants. He's not taking time to listen to you pray to God about something, okay? But you don't care about the answer that God is giving you. The answer God is saying to you is, I want you to be, I, I, I'm, I need you to be with me. I need you to be with me. And until you're with me, and until you're gonna focus on what I need you to focus on, you're never going to have the right people brought into your life. At the same time, the moment you start to focus on what God wants you to focus on, then check out what's going to happen. Oh man, you're going to be like, wow, this is really, this is so freaking mind blowing. God is going to bring all the right people into your life. You're going to look up one day and you're going to see that God is bringing all the right people into your life. Why? Because you're now focused on what he wants you to focus on. God, sometimes he miss you. Jesus Christ, he miss you. He wants you to come closer to him. Anytime he wants you to come closer to him, 
and you're not, you're going to realize you can't seem to make no friends. You can't seem to, uh, no matter what you pray for, it seems like it's not being answered because God is trying to get your attention. He's trying to tell you, hello, hi, I love you like crazy. And because you're special and you are special, anytime Jesus Christ or, or Jehovah God chooses you to represent, hello, can we talk Joan Rivers? Mm -hmm. Anytime he's choosing you to represent him, that means you are special. There's something about you that God has chosen that he wants you to focus on. And until you focus on that, you're never going to have the right people come into your life. Like with me, I'm having a, I have the, I have two right people. I have uh, two friendships. Everything about us is spiritual. When I think about it, I have Teresa and I have Samara and Paro the one I named my daughter after. I love that girl so much. I named my first kid after her. Why? Because everything about her and me, it was always spiritual, spiritual, spiritual. Teresa, a friend who I've had for, I don't know, 35 years or something like that. Yeah, God has brought those beautiful people into my life because I don't know, everything was about, everything we talk about. 75%, to be honest with you, Tubies and my Teletubbies, that I talk about with Teresa and Samara and Paro is spiritual. We're always talking about the Bible. We always like that. And that's why I think God has allowed them to be, I don't know, maintained in my life. But I'm not happy. Uh, actually, how about this? I am very happy with that. But I live in Albany, New York. And I need local support. So I'm going to my Heavenly Father in prayer. I need some, I need local my girlfriend, anytime I want to go out to dinner or whatever, she's all the way in Jersey. My other girlfriend, she's all the way in Florida. What good is that doing me? Here, it's not. It's not benefiting me. So what am I doing now is I'm focusing more on trying to develop friendships that are local because that's what I need. I need spiritual support. I need somebody who I can have dinner with. I want concerts. I want to go to the, the plays in the park. I want to... Uh, go to movies. I want you to come over to my place and I come over to yours and we watch movies and we sleep in the bed together. We're not gay. God knows we're not because we know how God feels about homosexuality, which that's a long story. If you're gay, there's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't act on it. Long story. I could go into details or go way off the... No. Point is, no. Until you start to focus on what Jehovah wants you to focus on Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus Christ wants you to focus on, you're never going to meet the right people. God is never going to bring the right people into your life. But the moment, I assure you, and I promise you this, that the moment that you start to focus on what Jehovah wants and Jesus Christ wants you to focus on, you're not going to have any friends it, as much as that you keep praying to God for. God is answering your prayer. He's answering your prayer. You just don't like the answer. Why can I have three, at least three good male friends or two good male friends? Because they're going to be a distraction. That's why you can't have them. Jehovah God told me to tell you, and you know who you are. The reason why you can't have them is because they're going to be a distraction. A distraction from what Jehovah and Jesus Christ want you to focus on. How about that? How, is that a good enough answer? Is that acceptable? Or, or are you uptight and it's crossing your boundaries because I'm not agreeing with you and I have a different viewpoint and a different opinion? I don't have opinions, honey, and, not, and I don't have a viewpoint, not when it comes to this topic. This is called inspired from your heavenly father talking to you, directly to you, and you know who you are. That's the reason why, because you're not focusing on what Jehovah wants you to focus on. And if you had friends right now, they're going to be a distraction. Do you understand that? Or are you a slow study? I know you said I can be very condescending, call it what you want to. At the same time, sometimes you have to be condescending what you call it, what you will. I call it trying to wake you up. It's called wake up. Okay, you have so many people in this world who are still sleepwalking. Are you still sleepwalking, sweetheart? Living in fairy tale land? No, you know what? 
We have to let go of the fairy tales. Everybody's walking around with their eyes off freaking focus on fairy tale. Freak the fairy tale, kid. Me, personally, I prefer to have reality. Let me tell you why I prefer reality. Because reality is living in the light. Anytime you are in fairy tale land, that means you're walking in darkness. And in the dark, you can't protect yourself in the dark. You can't see what's coming at you in the dark. You can't, you can't, you know, um, 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 uh, uh, in the dark, I can't, I can't protect myself. I can't see what's at me. I can't, um, mm -mm, no, what's, no, 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 no. Give me the light. The light is, Jesus Christ said, Jesus Christ is the truth and he is the light. He is not twilight zone. Jesus Christ is not living in the twilight zone. Do, 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 fairy tale world. Uh, 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 no, because no. Now, try not to get off the topic. Let's go back to, um, hmm. let's go back oh, to, gosh. hold on a minute. Oh, please. 